Do you have a big database in Notion and need to clean up duplicates? Well, that's easier said than done. Unfortunately, there's no find duplicates button anywhere in Notion. But it doesn't mean it's impossible. You just need to know how. In this video, I will show you two ways to remove duplicates from your Notion database, the big problem that you need to avoid along the way, and how you can fully automate the process. Ready? Well, let's start with method number one. This is our scenario for this first use case. We have our CRM and in the CRM we have a bunch of duplicates, right? So we have John Smith who pops up several times here again and I think at least the third time below. Now, for this first method, what we need is a second database, right? So you need your main database, contains information with the duplicates and then you need to create a secondary database. So I'm going ahead and I will just type slash database and we will call this um, our uh, duplicate, uh, duplicate finder helper, something like this. And then in this database, you want to have one entry. We only need one. And we can call this, you know, like uh, duplicate find. Now what we need to do is we need to relate this duplicate finder database to our duplicate CRM. In order to do so, let's click on plus. Let's look for a relation property and let's select the duplicate CRM. Make sure to turn on the two-way relation. We can change the name, although since this is just like a temporary um, uh, setting. We can uh, also just uh, keep the standard name. And now we need to make sure that all entries in our duplicate CRM are connected to this one single duplicate finder. To do so, you can simply, once every data is loaded in here, simply uh, click on uh, the checkbox here. This will select all entries. And now and you see already I have the duplicate finder popping up here and I can just click on there to connect it. Or in case you have a lot of properties and it doesn't show up here, you can right click any entry, say edit property, duplicate finder helper, and then connect it all to this one entry. Perfect. Now. We are actually already halfway done. We have everything connected here. And now we can write a formula to identify whether any entry is more than once in this list. To do so, we're going to go to our duplicate CRM and we create a new property here, which will be a formula property. And we can just call this a uh, duplicate question mark. And then let's click on edit formula. And what we want to do now is we want to grab that whole list of entries from this database. And we want to check whether the name that we have appears more than once in there. So very important, right? This is uh, an actual match search. It's not a fuzzy search, right? So if you have John Smith uh, three times in here and he's spelled different every time, then this method won't be able to find. But it's also very hard to find any duplicates like this if they're not actually identical. So one of the values in your database needs to be identical. You can adapt it for different properties, but let's start with a name because that's the easiest one. So what we want to do is you want to go duplicate finder. And then I want to say, well, from the duplicate finder, please give me the first entry. We have only one connect, right? This one where we say the duplicate finder. And then from here, we can now grab any property from our above database, which we only have two of, right? We have the name and the duplicate CRM. So let's click on duplicate CRM and just inspect how this looks like. We now just get a list of all the entries, right? The same basically that we have here. That's of course not what we ultimately want. So we go in here again, and now we want to format this, right? We want to have this just as a text output. And now you see, I get just a long string of all the names in my CRM. Now what I can do, is I can type dot again, and I can look uh, use the match operator. As you can see, match will return all matches of a regular expression as a list. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. So we're going to click here. And now what should we match it with? Well, we want to mat match it with our name property. So I'm going to click into name and then I can click save. And now, as you can see, for every entry in my um, database, I can see how often it appears in here. So uh, David Wilson appears once. Lisa Garcia appears once. But these entries up here, right, they appear several times. Here we have two packets. Now we could leave it like this, but to make it even more convenient, right, we want to now go ahead and say, well, please give me um, the length of these, right? Like uh, how many are actually there? Click on save. Now we have a number property. And now we see, so basically, um, if we wanted to, you know, clean it up all the way, we could also say, you know, like, uh, let's do this minus one, right? This gives me now actually uh, an indication of how many duplicates I have in there. Otherwise, you need just to do the mental gymnastics of recognizing that if it says one, right, uh, that's correct. Now we can simply filter and say, okay, please show me only everything where um, my duplicate helper um, is, uh, sorry, where duplicate um, is uh, larger than zero. Uh, and now I have all entries with duplicates, right? And I can clean up this list much easier. But then combine this with the sort, right? Where we say, okay, let's show me them also like alphabetically. And now I have all my duplicates together. And I can say, okay, Emily Brown, uh, these two John Smiths and uh, these uh, other entries, they should all be deleted. 
you can, of course, adjust this process now for any other property, right? Rather than checking for the name, you can check, for example, for the location, or for whatever reason you want to figure out duplicates of the last meeting date. You can do that just as well. In order to do so, you just need to adjust your formula, right? So the first thing would be to say, okay, we actually don't want to pull in um, just the list of names. We want to pull in certain um, values from that list, right? So in that in that case, what we would do, like for the duplicates here, before we format it, we would go in and say, okay, let's grab um, uh, all locations. So in this case, right, it's duplicate CM, then, and then it's dot .mac, and then we get from current um, the location. Now we would get all the locations, right? And then we would have just the same process of saying, okay, let's match this location with uh, the location that we've actually set, and then same comparison idea. Now to the drawbacks of this method. I already mentioned one, right? Uh, if you have don't exactly don't have the exact same spelling, it won't be able uh, to find it through that. The second disadvantage is that if you have a very, very large data set, then this might take a while to load, simply because you're doing some recursive logic with the formula. So if you have you know, hundreds or thousands of entries in here, it might take a second to load. You can still use it, but uh, it will take, you know, uh, just a moment for all the entries to correctly load and appear. That's the second. And then the third one is, of course, that this is a manual process, right? You need to go in, you need to look for the duplicates, and then you need to manually remove them, which if you have Again, a limited number of data sets, uh, that is fine. But if you have thousands of entries and hundreds of duplicates, and then you have to you know, sort of delete them all individually, that can be a bit annoying. So rather than doing it like this, we can also automate this process to make it a bit easier, in particular, if you regularly need to check a list for these updates. Before we continue, quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Gamma. Gamma is your new best friend when it comes to creating presentations, websites, or pretty much any visual design asset. Let's say, for example, that I'm in charge to plan the always connected campaign for my fictional company, Notion Max. As you might have heard, Notion is finally launching offline mode in 2025, and of course, my fictional company that produces these Notion Max needs to celebrate that with a special edition. And I put a lot of thought into this, right? I created this strategy paper, but now I need to present it to the team, right? And I need to create a presentation for that which would take me a lot of time doing so from scratch. But with Gamma, this just takes a few clicks. So yeah, I'm logged in already, and I will just say create new with AI. And then I can do a few options, right? Either if I have this long form uh, content already generated, like in this case, right, I wrote the strategy paper, I can go with this uh, option, paste and text. Otherwise, we can do it from one line prompt, though we can also import a file. So let's go with paste and text, continue. And now I just paste my whole Notion document in there. Then I say, well, I want to create a presentation with this, uh, and I'll click on the continue button. Now, what happens in the background is that Gamma will read through the brief, right? It will figure out a few uh, standard settings I can change, for example, whether um, it should like condense the content. But actually, in this case, I want to stick with the length that I currently have, right? It shouldn't be shorter because this is already all the information that we need. And um, I can also like set a specific uh, AI image mod uh, model if I want that, but this one is pretty good. And then once I'm happy with the way the standard structure is supposed to look, right? Eight slides, presentation, perfect. I will click on continue again. Now. Gamma will start figuring out, okay, how do we uh, put this together, right? I can pick some themes. I can change it also later, but for now, right, for this launch, let's go main with something neutral like this, and then I can click on generate. And now we get our presentation built. And the great thing about Gamma is, though, that the result of this is not set in stone, right? Unlike with other uh, AI creators, here I have full control over my slides. Uh, it is just really, really good at slide creator afterwards, but I don't have to start from a blank page and instead right, it builds it right in front of my eyes, complete any assets, mockups, and so on that I need. Here's the first version that the AI created for me, which is already pretty good. But now if I want to change something, right, I can simply, again, click into this, and I can add another point here, right, maybe some, some uh, bullet uh, point that I forgot. Or if I just want to change layout overall, I can do so manually, right, with all the building blocks. Or I can, again, right, ask it to come up with a new layout. For example, maybe this uh, target audience slide, right, this looks a little bit boring. So I can simply go in, uh, ask AI, please, can you can we try a different layout for this, right? Make this more visual. That's a good one. I don't want to have a different um, uh, look for my target audience. And now it will go and create a different layout from the AI that I can then use, or again, use other building blocks to modify. So now we have these four columns, right? We have some little icons on there, much better than before. So I'm going with this. To get started with Gamma for free, check out the link in the description. By the way, if you found this helpful so far, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and join my Notion newsletter. We have already more than 30,000 Notion fans on there, which is pretty insane. In my newsletter, I share a lot more tips, free templates, and a behind the scenes look as I'm building out Europe's number one Notion consultancy. You can find it with the link in the description. Now let's take a look at how to fully automate this process with method number two. For this method, we need the help of another tool, an awkward automation tool like make.com or relay.ir. Now, in this situation, I'm going to build it with make.com, but again, you can build it just as well with any other no-code tools. 
Link for that is in the description. Go there, sign up. You can use the free account. That's more than enough for this workflow. Now, once you've logged into the tool, it will look a little bit something like this. Of course, you won't see any scenarios probably running if this is the first time that you're using it. But basically, you want to click on the blue Create a New Scenario button in the top right corner. Here, we can now build our workflow. So first, we can name this, right? So we can call this Remove Duplicates from Notion. And then we want to add our first module. Now, the first step that we want need to do is we need to go into Notion and we need to retrieve all the entries that we have. So let's click on Plus. Let's say Notion. And then we want to use the Search Objects method. Now, I have already connected my Notion workspace, right? So I think it's this one, MF Consulting, perfect. But if it's the first time that you use uh, Make with Notion, you can just click on Add and then you can authorize your Notion account. Now, very importantly, you need to make sure that you share the page um, during that uh, onboarding workflow where all your duplicates live. So in my case, that is this page. And since I have it connected already, instead of like going through the onboarding workflow, I will just click on the three dots here. We'll go down to Connections and then we'll make sure that Make is selected. Da, da, da. Where is it? So here, this should be that connection. Then I can confirm, and now it should have access to this page and the database. Back in Make, I can now, uh, where it says Database ID, click on Search, and I will search for the name of my database, right? And it's called the Duplicate Serum, so I can just type Duplicate, and we'll retrieve all databases that are shared with it, and perfect, here it is. So that's the database that we need, and we want to basically retrieve now all values from here. In order to do so, we want the filter, right? We want to search through the whole database. And also, we need to make sure that our limit is large enough. So depending on how many entries you have in your data set, right, you want to increase this to, so that it works. So we can say, OK, maybe let's add like uh, 100 here, right? I don't have more than that. Uh, and then I can just click on OK. Now, in order to test this step, let's right click it and then say run this module only. Oops, uh, sometimes the saving uh, doesn't work. I mean, just have to open it again, click OK again. Now the red dot disappears. We can run this module only and we'll now retrieve all the entries from my database. Here they are. I have a total of 31 in there. Now that we have all the entries from our database sort of loaded into automation, we need to, for every uh, entry, check whether there are any other entries in here. So in order to do so, let's click on plus, and we want to add another Notion module, and we want to search again. We want to search through our same database. So I'm going to, again, look for a uh, duplicate here. Uh, and then we want to retrieve everything, well, with a matching name. So you get the idea, right? We basically, what we built with formulas previously, we're going to build now here with these no-code automation steps. So you may say, okay, please now retrieve only things where the name or like whatever property you want to compare to equals the name of the property that we are just uh, currently working with. So Sarah Johnson in this case. Perfect. And here we can then again uh, set a limit, right? But this limit now refers to how many duplicates it find, should find. So usually you're probably fine with a low limit here. But if you know that you might have, you know, like dozens of duplicates of one entry in there, you have to increase it accordingly. Perfect. Now I can click Save. And now we can, uh, just to for you to see how this works, we can then now click on Run Once. Uh, if you do the run once, I recommend that you uh, don't have too, uh, too high limit because you don't want to you know, burn too many uh, operations. Basically, uh, on every make plan, you get a number of operations. And for every time a module executes, um, you use up some of these operations, which means if you test the scenario with thousands of entries, right, you pretty quickly burn through all your limits. So you want to make sure for testing purposes that this limit is on the low end. So let's click on OK, let's click on Save, and then let's click on Run Once. And now it will retrieve 10 entries, right? For every entry, it will now try to find how many entries with that matching name exist in Notion. Perfect. So we can inspect, inspect our result and we can see for operation one, okay, uh, how many uh, outputs did it find? Well, it found two, right? So that tells us for the first thing that I looked at, well, there is one duplicate. For the second one, we can again look at it. It has one output one, perfect. So that's only one. Uh, for the next one, it's also only one. So you see how the data is structured. Basically, what we need to do now is wherever we have more than one bundle in our search set, we need to delete the duplicates. So let's go in, add another module. And here in Notion, we can now say that we want to um, delete um, a page content. It's a bit confusing, the title, but the page content will actually delete the, um, the, the element. Um, so that will work. Perfect. So what do we actually need to do, though, to set this up? Well, where it says page content ID, that is the page that you want to delete. So we'll go uh, clicking here. And now you see on the side here, you get all the properties from the previous steps that have been found, and we can map them in here. And basically, what we want to say, well, we want to delete the page ID that we found in the previous step. Now, that's, of course, not all. We can't press uh, play just now, because what would happen now is we would just, well, delete all entries, which is not ideal. We need to have two conditions. First condition is that we only want to go to the delete step if there have been has been more than one bundle found in this step. And we want to do this in only for the additional ones, not the first one that we retrieved. So in order to do this, let's click here um, on uh, the in-between. Let's uh, set a filter. And we want to say, OK, um, should we continue? Question mark. Well, we should only continue if uh, the 
total number of bundles is larger than one, right? So we can go to the numeric one and say, okay, greater than um, one, because that means that it has found a duplicate. And then the second thing is you want to make sure that the um, page ID uh, f uh, is not the same as the page ID in the first step, right? That means, oops, and go down here. This means that we will skip the one element in the delete step that we have for uh, where we have the, um, where, where we found the initial value, right? That's the one that we'll uh, ignore. Now I can click on save. And now in theory, we could uh, have this run. But there's one additional issue that we will run into. Um, here in the first step, right, we find all the interesting database, which will include also duplicates that will have been deleted by the time we come back to it, right? So you can imagine we, have, we get 10 entries back from Notion. And then for the first one, it checks, okay, do we have any duplicates? Yes, maybe we find three. And then we will delete two of them. But these two, right, they are still in our initial list, the first step uh, that will run through. So this scenario will run some errors because by the time it gets uh, down to entry seven or eight on the list, these might have been deleted. Well, there are a few ways to handle this. The easiest one is to simply say, well, ignore all errors. Uh, you could make this more robust, right? But this is just a simple demo use case. So in this case, we just ignore all errors, which means we will right click this module and say, well, add an error handle and just ignore if anything you know, comes up that you uh, can't find. Uh, and then same for the um, second step right here as well. We're going to just make sure that we uh, ignore this. Again, if this is a production uh, one right, that you build for a client or for your company, you're going to make this a bit more robust, but you get the idea of how this is generally built. So now that we have it all saved, we can go uh, and actually run this. So let's go in. Let's uh, set the limit and increase the limit here again to 100. Although if you test it again, right, you want to have it on low. I just want to now make sure that we run all workflows through and then inspect how it looks in Notion. Just as a reminder, this is how our data set looks in Notion, right? We have John Smith currently three times in there, Emily Brown several times in there. So now let's head back over and figure out, okay, uh, how many entries do we have? Uh, can we delete them all, right? So click on save and then click on run once. Now this will run through and now we can uh, inspect it here and ideally in a moment, right, we'll see the additional uh, John Smiths disappear and the additional Emily Browns. Okay, some things are happening already, right? You see some of these uh, entries getting removed. Uh, we can also quickly check in here, right? So we're currently at number 10, 11, 13, and we see so far like three times it has gone through to actually the delete step. Uh, now, okay, there's only one John Smith left. That's perfect. Emily Brown, still one there. So this is the last duplicate we have, and there it is, and uh, it's also gone. Perfect. So that means our automation works, right? As far as I can see, we haven't deleted any <laughs> entries that should not have been deleted. So that's perfect. Uh, and now the only thing that's left is to schedule this automation so that it regularly checks for duplicates. To do so, uh, in the scenario, you want to go down here where it says every 50 minutes and you want to click on there and now you want to set the interval at which you want to run this uh, automation. Now, again, I highly recommend to not run this, uh, you know, uh, on uh, on a very short schedule unless you absolutely have to because every time this automation runs, it will burn operations, even if it, you know, only checks all the entries. And if you have a large data set, right, you need to check every single entry, whether there are several entries in there that can consume quite a lot of operations quite quickly. So. See whatever makes sense for you. Usually, you know, like running this once a week is probably more than enough. Uh, maybe you can even get away with once a month to uh, make sure your data uh, has the right integrity. But again, it depends on your use case. So in this case, I will say, okay, let's actually run this days of the month. I want to run this always on the um, last day of every month. Um, and then uh, at 1016, right, that's okay. And then I will say, yes, please activate the scenario. Now, once a month, this will run a check for duplicates. Now, just one last quick remark, and that is that you could now take this approach and also expand it for like an actual fuzzy search. So, right, as I mentioned, this approach also currently uh, checks for like exact matches. If you want to be a bit more lenient, right, and you want to have um, matches that are just like roughly equal or you need some better understanding uh, of the model, maybe sometimes people, you know, mix up first and second name, these sort of things. Well, in that case, you could uh, add AI steps into the mix to say, okay, you know, here's our name, here's a list uh, of entries in the whole data set. Can you find any um, matches that are exact, right, or like very similar um, and that can then help you um, build these more um, robust analytics for duplicates. Goes a bit beyond this video though, but just as an idea of what would be possible. So that's how you remove duplicates in Notion. It's one of these little tips that can really make the difference. But you know what's better than one tip? 117. That's right. Here's a video with 117 must-know tips for Notion. Everything you need to become a true Notion master. Just click here. And I will see you in a second.